This is episode 271 of the Super League Pod. We learn about being right, fat boy style. Featherstone finally take on an animal based nickname, and we learn where to get dresses with pockets from. But really, this week is all about the snap reactions to Toronto choosing the withdrawal method and mid recording RFL release of the, f- of the fate of Championship in League One in 2020. We squeeze in plenty more, and it may make uncomfortable listening for some, but strap in, it's SLP time. Hello listeners, welcome along to episode 271 of the Super League pod. Uh, this week you have myself, Wigan fan Mark, and in a change to the uh, intended schedule, we have, instead of Tim, we have Sarah, Hull FC fan. So, um, Sarah, nice one to be thrown into the last minute on, isn't it? I know, that was me really thinking, oh, that, this rundown looks nice, Not you know, might be an early night. Quiet week, no, no yeah. such luck. No, I mean, what happened to releasing news on a Tuesday? <laughs> yeah, at least it was like released on a. At least it was a Monday news release when we don't have a full slate of Super League games to talk about, and we won't have a full slate of Super League games to talk about for the rest of the season. Um, as we're mainly going to obviously this week talk about Toronto Wolfpack. Um, obviously, after today's announcement that they pulled out of the Super League, so that's going to be heavy in our news and it's probably going to have to be like us adjusting some of the other news stories as we go along as, as, uh, as that's probably adapted some of the positions on some of the things like Super League restart Challenge Cup restart things like that but before we get into that um, do you want to tell everyone about our episode sponsor who is um, having a told you so day I, I believe celebrating himself <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so tonight's episode is sponsored by Rob's Toy Shop um, and you can find a wide range of toys, gifts, rugby league birthday cards and more on Rob's Toy Shop at e- on eBay. You can visit stores.ebay.co.uk forward slash Rob's Toy Shop. And on any orders over £5, you can earn 5% cash back. And also 1% of your order value will go into the SLP coffers by putting SLP discount at checkout. Yeah, thanks to Rob's Toy Shop for their continued support. So we've already sort of mentioned what's going to be on the show a little bit. We're gonna when we get into the news, we're gonna kind of break it down into three sections. So this week in coronavirus Toronto edition is is what we're calling the first section. We may have to have a breather after that. Then we've got the sort of normal um, news rundown that we've been doing over the last few weeks with um, a few bits of season restart related news which is very exciting and very positive uh, that we get to talk about and then loads of little tidbits of news to pick our way through we've got the nrl round 10 uh, results brit brit watch stats and match fan match reviews so um, we'll still uh, pull all that together and then the quiz will be toronto wolfpack player related um yay to keep my specialist subject to keep it on sort of a trend i guess um we might cut down the amount of questions depending on how long we've got up to that point i think um we'll we'll take a quick break to go into the news um in just a second i think what before we to preface anything that we're going to talk about in this episode what i would say is you know any this is a, a rugby league fans podcast you know we're not administrators we're not uh, experts we're just fans who care about the sport so to any Toronto Wolfpack fans um, out there who listen to the show, you know it's a it's a it's going to be a hard listen for you guys. It's it's a hard day, a hard week, um, and from just purely the fan of rugby league perspective, we we hope you guys get through this and can stay fans of of rugby league no matter what happens one way or another with your club side. And um, and yeah, we we feel, we do feel for the fans, don't we, Sarah? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, I. I've stared down the barrel of of my club disappearing. So um, whatever my personal opinion on Toronto as a club and its position within our rugby league competition, you know, I wouldn't wish anybody to lose their their club at all. No, exactly. Um, well said. And like you say, you know, tw- twenty years or so ago, it, it was your club in a similarish position, wasn't it? So. Um, yeah. 
yeah so um as, as fans of rugby league we want you guys to stay on board and stay part of everything even if you're going to have to listen to some things that you're not going to be that that pleased with <laughs> let's say but um with that said let's now move on to news from around the world of rugby league <laughs> Okay, so news this week, and um, as we said, we're going to kind of break it into three parts. And instead of just jumping into today's news with the Toronto Wolfpack, it's worth building up through the week as it, as it went by, because it, it, it was a strange sort of week where things were, were building up. So we're going to start back on the 15th of July when Toronto Wolfpack, um, Wolfpack announced that you know, they could be forced to pull out of this season's Super League campaign when it resumes in August. Because of, at that time, they were saying because of visa issues could rob them of up to seven players, including... Um, millionaire man Sonny Bill Williams the club say visas for seven overseas players from Australia and New Zealand only allow them to stay in England for a maximum of six months a year so uh, that time limit has been exceeded because they've been forced to remain here during lockdown and they will now have to return home it's also understood um, that the club was facing financial stresses as well with rumours persisting of players being paid late which was uh, happened again in June many of Toronto's income streams have dried up in 2020 with the club unable to play any home matches um in Canada this year and uh, in their first year of, of Super League and they don't take a share of potential TV funding I'm sure that'll come up uh, later again and couldn't use the, the government's furlough scheme either to, to save some costs and obviously um, as a cloud that hangs over all of this is the RFL is still to decide what happens with promotion and relegation to and from Super League this year Um that was sort of what the BBC, I think, was reporting on the 15th of July. I've taken that piece from. On the 16th of July, the... Um... Yeah, on the 16th. Sorry. No, go go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> on the 16th of July, Toronto confirmed that they will play the rest of the 2020 season in the UK. In a statement released by the Wolfpack, it said... Regrettably for the Wolfpack, the challenges around travel, international border protocols and the hosting of public events in Toronto have proved too significant for the team to be able to host games at Lamport Stadium this season. This is not a decision that has been taken lightly and we vow to return to Toronto bigger and better than ever before in 2021. We thank those fans who have already reached out with overwhelming messages of support, as well as our members who have already inquired about rolling over their memberships to the 2021 season. We take great comfort from knowing our fans in Canada will continue to be a part of our incredible journey and look forward to seeing you all in Toronto for our 2021 Super League season. Yeah, and that statement at that stage, you know, it wasn't an unexpected announcement. Um, it, it is an understandable and difficult announcement but everyone was expecting them to still play <laughs> in 2020 and then today the 20th of july the toronto wolfpack have withdrawn from the remainder of the 2020 super league season owing to the overwhelming financial challenges posed by the covid19 pandemic they say they still fully intend to field a team in the 2021 season toronto who will also be withdrawing from the challenge cup said in a statement this decision has not been taken lightly and in consideration of a range of factors specific to the club as the only transatlantic team in the league. Greatly reduced ticket, sponsorship, merchandise and game day revenue streams have resulted in the loss of all 11 of the team's home Super League games in Toronto. The Wolfpack will be left covering significant additional costs simply to complete a season of games in the UK, including COVID, test, COVID testing, stadium rentals, medical costs and player pay increases to, to align with the rest of the league. The Wolfpack, of course, were bottom of the table when the season was suspended in March, having lost all of their six opening games. The only game they won was in the Challenge Cup. The clubs say they will now be working with Super League and the Rugby Football League to understand the process with regards to next season. In a joint statement, the Super League and RFL said they were very disappointed to learn that Toronto would be withdrawing after firm assurances had been received just recently as last Thursday regarding their participation. The club's decision is especially disappointing given the imminent restart of the season, the statement added. Our immediate focus is on getting the season back underway on the 2nd of August and meeting the needs of our host broadcaster, Sky Sports. So that's kind of where we were and where we are. 
we're recording this what a few hours after sarah yeah yeah it's 8 p.m isn't it so what five hours on is it yeah four or five hours on since we knew since we learned about this the afternoon is kind of word word by <laughs> since it was announced hasn't it yeah so yeah all of these responses are um sort of very hastily given and by the time people are listening you know probably more information will have come to light and um and yeah the 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 responses we give and the responses that we share from other people are simply an immediate response probably not terribly well thought out yeah you know you know some of it will be not suggesting our listeners don't think things out but (laughs) just with the bare bones why why do anything different to the rest of the sport just because we're fans um yeah like you say it's kind of a little bit uh knee jerk half the press kind of reactions probably in reactions are going to be informed by people's underlying views and as you sort of brought up the other week when we talked about promotion and relegation about our underlying views i think it's probably fair to sort of state for everyone that fundamentally i am optimistic and hopeful and 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 positive about um expansion and you're not uh, you're not pro expansion outside of the uk yeah fair to say isn't it yeah totally so what's your uh immediate sort of reaction then on this sort uh sort of news big news uh, it's a mess like it there's there's lots of different levels to look at it at it aren't that you know i mean going forward what does this mean presumably clubs are going to have to have their result against Toronto wiped out, but then, you know, and presumably, therefore, other teams will get a match off in the coming weeks. Um, then what do you say? Do you say next season we have no... Well, personally, I don't believe that Toronto should be allowed to play in the competition next season, given that they've done this. Um, because... Well, I mean, we go back to that that word that's been used throughout um, this pandemic. You know, it's unprecedented, but you can't have teams picking and choosing when when they're going to play and what matches they're going to play. I don't believe, you know, really every every fixture should go down as a loss for Toronto. Therefore, they finish bottom on no wins and therefore get relegated. Yeah, I, I think the um, the issue of promotion and relegation kind of in a way gets put to one side by this. This is a team forfeiting fifteen games, um, mm-hmm. which or sixteen games, isn't it? Actually, in Toronto's case, so forfeiting yeah. sixteen games. I think if if they'd have found a way to muddle through, um, I've stated before, I don't think relegation should should sort of happen in this season that has an asterisk against it and a lot of other question marks but this raises its whole new own individual question mark and I I I struggle to see an argument given the timing of all of this as well thrown into the mix I struggle to see an argument that allows them to continue in Super League next season I think the only possible argument I can see is is a financial one in that the existing 11 clubs will be better off with Toronto in the division in that they would, if they had to give up, say they had to give up their um, central funding again or something like that, or have to pay some sort of financial penalty even for what they've done to the back end of this season um, that the other Super League clubs from, could benefit from. I think that's the only way that they stay in the Super League for next year. And I don't know how that's possible. I don't know how deep... David Argyle's pockets are how much he would want to spend on that sort of thing because in all other circumstances this would be a removal from the competition in in either through the the natural process that we have in relegation or a, a team losing their license to play in in the competition and having to reapply to start again at the bottom of the structure yeah 
Um, and I, I say that with a really, you know, heavy heart. I think this is an absolute mess, like you say, and it's a, a real 